de profesor. Hi, professor. Hi, so, professor. Before I start, I would like to just remind you that uh, this Wednesday we are going to have uh, assessment two, okay, from the lecture four and lecture five. And then later after this assessment, actually, we did not have the quiz two, which supposed to most probably I'm going to combine the quiz two with the exam two. Like assessment two will be consistent for fully of 30 points. So, uh, you will be given uh, um, like more than enough time to solve those multiple choice questions. You'll be given six multiple choice questions and you'll have more than enough time to solve it. If you solve these questions like recommended questions, it will be more than enough to prepare for the exam. Okay, do you have any questions before I start? I would like to just uh, do some questions from the lecture five. And by the way, uh, these questions, you have the solutions already. And for these questions, the solutions are in Excel format. It's here, okay? I'm gonna solve today question 21 and 31, which is more complicated than those which are given before that. 20, 16 and 18 and three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna go through the 21 and 31. And I'm going to attach this file in here it will be attached under the lecture number five. So it will be here. The solution is here actually, it's given, but anyway, I'm gonna put it in Excel file as well. Professor. Yes. Uh, I have a question regarding our final exam. We yes. will not have final exam, right? Very true. We are going to have uh, the article itself that you are write, writing now. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So we still have some chapters to cover to finalize your article, like uh, to give a structure to your research, like carrying out the empirical and simple regression and multiple regression analysis. So there are three chapters that are left that we need to cover. Once we cover, uh, at least you will know how to structure your research work. So to make it ready to publication. So there will be a conference, as I told you before, uh, we will send uh, our articles there once we give a structure on it. Okay, now, uh, if you don't have any question, uh, I'll just start. Yes, I have a question. Yes, sure, Tamila. It means that we will not have a second quiz, right? It will be in the midterm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't have any exam uh, quiz too. Uh, I just decided to make it included in here. It will be 30 points. Okay. So in the exam, you have more, in, uh, you have, you've got much time. So you will be very concentrated and you'll have a time to concentrate on each question. And I will not make the question in sequential order, okay? I'll make the question like free to move from question to question. And should we attach our solutions for like? Yes, yes, definitely. If something goes wrong, I don't know, like uh, there is some failure in the system, at least there will be solution available. Mm. Okay. So I can go through the solution. Yes, sir. Uh, you said that we can go through the question free, like. Yeah, freely. Yeah, you don't. Know, yeah, like uh, before, uh, not in here, but when I ask generally questions, uh, especially the multiple choice, you can, uh, it's uh, in the, I ask it in the sequential order, which means you cannot return to the previous question. Mm -hmm. However, in here, I'm asking in a free order. So you're free to move from one to another question, like going back and forward and so on. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, will we write the uh, second midterm the whole class? Didn't get I it. mean, time limit. Yeah, during the class. During the class, you're going to write it. During the class hour. Wednesday. One hour and 15 minutes, yes. It's uh, the exam will be 60 minutes, but within this one hour, 15 minutes, within this time, okay? So if you start, let's say 10 past one, so you'll be given 60 minutes. But if you start, let's say half past one, then you your exam automatically will finish at 2.15. So you have at least less than 60 minutes. So you have to arrange your timing uh, efficiently so that it fits 
within given the hour, your, your 60 minutes. Is that clear? Everything is clear? Let me just. Yes. Okay, great. I have not put it the dates, but I have to put <laughs> dates and time. Let me put a date. 29th, 30th, and 31st. So 31st. And the time during the class hour, which is 1 p.m. And what else we need to know that this is the most important and the Zoom link. And the Zoom actually is must, okay? You have to log in the Zoom, uh, opening your cam. Okay. And still we're gonna have two more activities. So for this month, I'm gonna arrange, for the month of the April, I'm going to arrange two activities. So to make it 10 in total, maybe I will do three activities, giving you one bonus activity to just if you miss any activity before, it will compensate those that missed activity. Okay, coming to the question 21 at the end of the chapter. Okay, we are given uh, here. Can everyone see the Excel file? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the balance sheet for GBI, GBI presented below in millions, okay? The cash, Fed funds, and loans, and the loan fix with the floating fix and total assets. So as you can see, the balance sheet is given here. And some uh, notations is given here as well, concerning the assets and the liabilities, we have it, okay? So we have to use this information as well. So for the first question, you're asked to estimate duration of the fixed rate loan portfolio of GBI, so fixed, which is here, okay? So it's pretty easy. We know how to estimate the duration, but before doing that, we need to just uh, derive some information from given question here. First of all, what we have here, like fixed rate loan, have five-year maturities, okay? Five-year maturities from one to five. And it's priced at par, okay? It means the, the value of the bond or the value of this loan is at par, which means the bond value is equal to par value. So we have here the value, which is 65. It is the same as, so the bond value is 65. So the present value or, sorry, the par value is 65. So they're same. That makes our YTM, the yield to maturity, is equal to coupon rate. 12%. So annual interest rate is 12%. So then we can easily estimate the rate. So we this is cash flow, like we estimate the coupon payment for year on yearly basis. Uh, coupon rate times by 65, you get 7.8, 7.8, 7.8, and at the end of the day, you get $65 plus 7.8. And in total, it makes 72 and eight. And then you just discount those cash flows with a 12%. You discount it. And that's, that discounted cash value is multiplied by the time. At the end of the day, you add them up and you uh, this divided by 65. So this amount is divided by 65, you get duration of that fixed rate, okay? So I'm giving you this, for example, guys, I might give the, the duration of this, I might give duration of this, 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 let's say, but there's no duration actually, okay? And this duration will not be given to you. So if you're asked, let's say in the second question, Estimate the duration of asset. You remember we were multiplying with the weights, okay? The cash is non-interest bearing asset. So which means, uh, am I recording it? No, that's my, 
Yes, I'm recording. I'm recording. Okay. So duration of asset is estimated like weighted average of duration multiplied by it, the value of the asset. And if this is not given, you're going to estimate. So which we did it in here. So the duration of asset multiplied uh, the value with it, its weight. Okay. All the duration is multiplied with its weight. And then this is divided by the total value of the assets that we have at 220. The same thing we do here. Total value we get of discounted cash flow multiplied by the year. And we divide by the 65, by the value of the asset itself. We get the duration of specific asset. But if you calculate the duration of all assets, then we get the weighted average. I mean, the duration of asset times by the value, duration of asset times by the value. And at the end of the day, you just add them all, you get the duration of asset. This is what we get it. Okay, do you have any question up to this point? Okay. No. Please feel free if you have any questions, just stop me and I'll just go again. Now, part B, it says, which, uh, if the duration of the floating rate and the Fed funds is 0 0.36, okay, here. So which means Fed fund is given, this given, this is automatically zero because it's a non-interest bearing. And the duration of this you estimated in a previous question. So to find the duration of asset, you add them up with the multiplication of value, uh, the duration value. And you get the duration of assets. This is how we get part B. In part C, in part C, what is the duration of those core deposit if they are priced at par? So the core deposit in here, okay? So their price at, so we need to estimate the duration of core deposits. So we need to get some more information concerning the core deposits, okay? Here, the principal repaid at maturity core deposit are a fixed rate at 8% annually, okay? And this is euro currently yield is 9%. This is information we should keep it in mind that we're given, 8% and so on. So first of all, my coupon payment here is 8% times the value of this because it says that uh, duration, the core deposit is priced at par. And then I discounted, I discounted with 8% again. Why? Because it says the, it's priced at par. So which means the YTM is equal to coupon rate. My coupon rate and the YTM is 8%. And the, uh, the maturity is two years, one and two. So discount them, multiply by the time, sum up and divide by discounted cash flow value. Total, you get actually the duration of the core deposit. That's it. Then we move further, part D. If the duration of Euro CDs and Fed liabilities is 0 0.401 year, and what is the duration of GBI's liabilities? Now we need to estimate the duration of the liabilities. We need to estimate the duration of the liabilities. So duration of liabilities works in the same principle as we do the estimation for the duration of the assets. So we multiply the value by its duration, add them up, and we get the duration of liability. So it said that uh, Fed funds and here we go. It said that uh, Fed funds and Euro CDs are given the duration. It's all for one, but we need to know what is the core deposit, and the core deposit we already estimated here. 
So we just add them up, multiply, add them up all, and we get the total number 110. This 110 is divided by 220 by total value of the asset. That would give us duration of the liabilities. In this way, we get the duration, but basically why we estimate the duration of fast and duration of liability is to see actually the main impact on the change of the net worth of the bank or any financial institution or any organization. We have the duration as estimated, we have duration liability estimated. Now, uh, if this is the uh, relative change in the interest rate, change in R, over one plus R, it shows the relative change in the interest rate. That means that uh, if the interest rate change goes up or down, and at least we'll be able to know how it will go down or up. So this part, I want to tell you, this part is called a leverage adjusted duration, okay? Leverage adjusted duration. Duration of asset minus duration of liability times by K. So uh, we were on part D, we estimated duration of the liability. Now we are trying to, uh, the question is E, what is the GBI duration gap and what is the interest rate risk exposure? Actually, uh, when, uh, if you want to estimate the GBI duration gap or leverage adjusted duration gap, it directly shows you uh, the exposure of the interest rate. I mean, in what case your financial institution will be exposed to interest rate increase or decrease? It will tell us the result. If you have a positive number, then it means that your financial institution is exposed to interest rate increase. If you have a negative number, then it means that your financial institution is exposed to a negative change in the interest rate. Because why? Because of this negative sign. So uh, how do we estimate? We just employ into this formula. Duration of asset minus duration of liability and times by 200, which is liabilities over assets. K is represent, uh, shows the proportion of your assets, which is financed by debt. That's why it is called, uh, if you want to write this formula down, it will be looking in this way, duration of asset minus duration of liabilities, multiplied by K. So duration of assets, duration of liability is given. And this is uh, K, it represents the proportion of the asset is financed by debt. So it's leverage, leverage adjusted duration gap. If it's positive, uh, we have positive duration gap in here. So any increase in interest rate will lead to a reduction in the net worth of the bank or any financial institution. So if this is positive, if this part is positive, then it means any change in interest rate here, any change in the interest rate, relative change in the interest rate, let's say if it's positive, that means the net worth of the bank, the change in the equity will go down because of this sign, negative sign. So if this interest rate is negative, is going down and having the leveraged adjusted duration gap positive, then your equity will go up. So it's opposite direction. Okay. Do you have any questions up to this point? Okay. Now we know the exposure of the interest rate, how it will affect. We know the positive here. 
Now, if we move to the question F, it says where it says that, what is the impact on the market while of the equity if the relative change in, the, in all interest rate is an increase of 1%? So it means that uh, relative, so they already estimated to you, okay, here. This is a relative change in interest rate, 1%, or 100 basis point. Not that relative change in interest rate. So, so what do you expect? The net worth of the bank is going up or down if the interest rate increases by 1%? Down. Down. Down, yes, because as we said, if you have a leverage adjusted duration gap positive, then any increase that underlines your exposure to the increase of the interest rate. So you are not really favoring when the interest rate goes up. So you are, more be you are better off when the interest rate goes down in this case. But in here, it says that the interest rate goes by 100 basis points up. So we expect that net worth of the bank will go down. So the value of the assets here and duration is here and we multiply by 1%. As we can see what happens, there is a reduction in the net worth of the bank. So we just employ all the numbers, we plug into this formula and we estimate the net worth. And what is the, if you go for G, what is the impact on the market value of the equity if relative change in all interest rate is a decrease of 0.5, which is 50 basis points reduction. So basically we are facing the opposite uh, to the previous question and we can see that it's going up. The network will go up. And okay. And question H, what variables are available to GBI to immunize the bank? First of all, what is the immunization of the bank? Can you just give me the clarification of it? To decrease the duration gap. Why do you need to decrease the duration gap? To decrease the interest rate risk. Very true. The idea is to reduce. So immunization means you're reducing, you're minimizing the exposure of the interest rate risk. So you're minimizing the interest rate risk. So, so what are the variables that we use to immunize the bank? Is duration of assets, duration of liabilities, and K, okay? Basically, we want it to equal to zero. In reality, in real market, it's not possible. However, uh, in theory, you, when you make it zero, you're in the best position. You don't want to make any profit and you don't want to be exposed to any interest rate changes. So you're trying to make it your risk minimized as, as much as possible. So either you're going to play with the duration of fast or you're going to play, play with the duration of liabilities. So how can you make your duration of assets? So your adjusted leverage adjusted duration gap should be zero. This is the idea, okay? Which it should be zero. So, which means duration of asset and duration of liability, and K. So you should play with something in order to make this zero. Your duration of liability is 0 0.50 and duration of asset 1.39. But adjusted duration of liability is 0 0.93. So then either you can play with the duration of liability or you can play with the duration of asset. But we, I decided to play with the duration of asset, okay? Then I need to find what should be my duration asset in order to make the leverage adjusted duration gap equal to zero. My duration asset should be equal to 0 0.45 year in order to have my leverage adjusted duration gap equal to zero. Does it make sense? Or you can play with the duration liability. If you just bring the duration liability to the right, to the one side and leave the duration the K on the other side. So which means that duration of asset over K. And 
And then I just substitute duration of asset minus duration of liability amount. And as you can see, my leverage adjusted duration gap is zero. So, which means in order to reach this one, uh, then it's another stra a strategy that can be used. In the duration of asset, I have cash, Fed funds, and loans, and loans fixed. So I have to reduce them so that uh, here's my duration of assets. Okay, it's 1.39, but it should be 0 0.45. In order to make your duration of asset 0 0.45, which asset specifically you should reduce in order to get this value in total? So there's another way going that place. So maybe you can reduce this uh, 40.3 duration. Maybe you can reduce the other things, but the best is to reduce this one, the duration of fixed loan, because this got, it's got the highest one. So it's good to, it's easy to use it. So you just put all the numbers here and put it X in here and put this value into this place. And you can easily estimate what should be your duration of fixed loan in order to have your average duration of assets is equal to 0 0.45. Am I clear? Yes. Okay, great. So this is where we estimate the duration of us when we immunize the position of the any financial institution in the market. Okay. That's done for this question. If you don't have any questions, uh, I will move to the question 31. Okay. We are given uh, in here, a bank that has got the asset portfolio and consists on 100 million of 30 year, 8% coupon and 1000 bonds that is selling at par. And in part A, you're asked to estimate the bond's new price if the market yield change immediately by plus minus 0.10%. So if it goes up and down 10%. So the bond value, we know how to estimate, okay? The information we are given here, okay? Coupon rate, face value or par value, maturity and the white here. We can easily estimate the bond value. Okay, we can see that uh, YTM and the coupon rate are same. Okay, and the bond value will be this. You can use the formula. I use the formula of the present value. Okay, I put the rate, I put the number of period, I put the payment. Okay, which is uh, coupon rate times face value, B1 and B2. And I put the face value, which is B2. And I just press enter. I compute this. Then it says, what if your YTM will go up by 0.10% and will go down? So which means that this will increase by 0. Point, uh, by what, uh, what I mean here. So if this, this is not 8%, but 8 by 0.10% more or by 0.10% less. So I can do the same thing for three different stories, okay? When let's say more, okay, plus, plus 0.10%, sorry, plus 0.10%. Or another story, minus 0.10%, okay? So if this is the case, that means uh, in here, it will be changed plus 0.10%, okay? And if I have the same story in here, I will have it not increased, but reduced, okay? So in here, when I do estimate the bond value and the bond value in here with minus and plus increase, so I use the same formula, the present value. But 
The only thing that I change is changing the YTM by increasing 10% and 0.10% uh, and increasing by 0.1%. So estimation in this, my bond value will be if it goes down by 10%, which in the formula, as you can see, I'm reducing it, the rate. And here, I'm increasing it. And this is the value that I have. It. After just, just following this question, what will be the new price if the market yield change immediately by plus minus 2%? Now, not 0, 10%, but 2%. The same formula, add 2% here, which will be 10%, and subtract 2% from here, which will be 6%. And then definitely the bond value will be changing. Here we go. So this is what I get it. This is part A. This is what I asked to do. In part B, in part B, Duration of the bonds is given 12.608%, okay, 16%. What are the predicted bond price in each of four cases using the duration rule? So what is the, so we need to uh, use this formula to predict the price, change in the price, okay? How the price will change. Uh, the formula is here, the duration, relative change in the price and price itself. What is the amount of error between the duration prediction and actual market value? So this is the actual market values and we will see how the price will change using this formula, using the duration. And we will see by how much it variates between the market value and the duration prediction. So duration, we know how to estimate. Okay, it's, here we go. And it's given actually, but estimated in any way but it's given here. So first of all, I'm trying to estimate using this formula, okay? Price duration. I'm just applying, duration is 12.16 times by 0.10% reduction, okay? Zero point, and divided by one plus R and multiplied by the price of the bond, which is 1000. I get it this, then I add to $1,000 to the bond price because my bond price is 1000, is 1000. I add this uh, price change that I used the formula and I get 1011. But what if the change in the price increases? So the change, the percentage change in yield increases, that will cause my change in the price go down. And my bond price using the prediction formula of price with duration, duration prediction, we call it, we'll have this amount. If it's two minus plus 2%, we'll have the bond value is equal to this. So saying 1000, the change in here. So how these changes are estimated using this formula. Now we can create a table where we can compare the market value change and prediction duration value. Change. So this is market price that I estimated from here, okay. So this, I get it from here. Then I have prediction price with a duration, which is here to, by using this formula. The second step what I do in here, I want to see by how much it deviates. What is the error level in here? As you can see, if the percentage change is small, there will be less error between this and this. So which we can say reliable to use the price change as well, the formula to predict the price. But if the percentage changes, as you can see, the error increases. 
that makes a bit unreliable to use the price change with the duration, the prediction duration value. So the idea is this one is better, but what if you can use this one to just compare to kind of support your price changes on the bond as the interest rate changes. As we can see, the more interest rate changes, changes the more sensitive you are. Okay, this is formula we are using. So do you have any questions up to this point? Do you want me to go again over it? Yes. Now, one more time. Uh, coming, uh, the idea is that we estimate how the bond value will change if the interest rate changes. This is, we got it, okay, there's no problem. We just change the YTM and we estimate the bond value with the formula, either through the Excel or financial calculator or any scientific calculator. There's a formula. We employ all the numbers into that formula and we get the results. That's totally fine. Now, there is a change in the price is given formula, which is used to estimate the bond value. I mean this. So we are using the duration to estimate bond value and how accurate it will be from the market value changes. How do we estimate? First of all, we find the, the price change by how much the price will be changing, the net amount by using the formula. If 0.10% decreases, our price changes by 11.26. If 0.10% increases, our price change goes up by 11, uh, goes down by 11.26. If in change in the interest rate goes down by 2%, we can see the price change will be 225 or the vice versa go down by 225. And what you do in here, you just add these changes to the market value. So 1000 plus 11, which is 1011.26 or 1000 minus 11.26 will be equal to 988 and 1000 plus 225 will be 1025 or 1000 minus 225 will be 774. So this is a bond price prediction using the duration estimation. But our job is to compare where the price prediction from the market value is deviating from, uh, is there is a difference between market value bond price and market value, which is estimated through prediction of duration value. So we just put them here. So this part is coming from here, as I said before, and this part, is what we estimate by using this formula. So from here, but this is based on this formula. And then from here, we, we subtract this from price market value and pr prediction duration value. And we get the difference in here. Okay, we just see the difference. The higher the difference, the less accurate will be the estimation. So we can see that the prediction duration value is not accurate as we expected. So there is another measurement that could be used in order to see the accuracy of it, which is called the convexity. Uh, the convexity uh, is actually showing you the relationship between the duration of the bond changes and the interest rate changes. So it basically demonstrates how the duration of the bond changes as interest rate changes. And it's abbreviated as CX is always given. Okay. There is a way to estimate it, but in the exam, if you are asked this question, it will be given to you. So now in we bit modifying this formula. We are just modifying this formula by adding the convexity. So when you add the convexity, one over two and so on, we when you modify it, we'll see how the estimation, how the prediction 
will deviate from the market value prediction. So again, first of all, the price market value is this one that we estimated. It's here, okay. Now we estimate the price convexity, okay, price convexity. In order to estimate, it's same like 1000 plus change in the price. They modify with the convexity. So change in the price, we estimate it here, like 11.37. How did I get it? I put duration, I put the relative change in interest rate, I put one over two and the convexity. And my convexity is here, which is given. And I just multiply with the price, I get the change. And this change added to the uh, bond value, you can see by how much it changed. Now we can see that price of the convexity is here. It's from here, it comes from here, okay. And then we can see the error by how much it, a small change in the interest rate, the error is equal to zero. It's good. The accuracy is validated using this change price with the convexity. And a big change in the interest rate by 200 basis points, we can see that the error is not big as in the previous case. It was 50, but in here we have seven, the maximum, the biggest one, which is very low as well. It's good. So the conclusion we can make, the convexity estimation uh, using uh, to estimate the, uh, to predict the bond price is more accurate than using as uh, duration only. So the convexity should be plugged into formula. I mean, to modify, should be modified formula with the change in the price that would give us more accurate uh, estimation of the prediction of the price for the bonds. So how do I estimate? I just 0 0.12, which is uh, duration, relative change, and one over two, multiply by the convexity and multiply by change in the interest, which is uh, 0 0.001 by like 0.10% reduction and raised to the power two. And this all multiplied by the bond price, 1000. But in here we have a, increase, here we have a decrease of interest rate by 200 basis points, we have increased. And as you can see the bond price with the convexity, price convexity is here. And we just compare with the market value of the bond that we usually estimate when the interest rate changes. And we can see the error term. So actually this could be used to estimate the bond price as a support to market value, to predict in what way it will go, a specific the bond value, if you have it. Okay. Do you have any questions? Anything you would like to ask? So these questions, 20, 16, 18, three, five, six, and seven are here. They're simple. I'm going to upload it to the Moodle as well, but let me do it now because I'll upload it into Moodle. So file solution where you can have an access. So I have to put it here. So it's here under the lecture file, Excel file solution. Okay, 
before I let you go, actually I'm done. If you have any question you can ask, I'll be happy to answer. If you don't have any question, I'll take the attendance and then I'll let you go earlier today. Aidana is here. She was here, I think. Yes, I'm here. Lee? I'm here. Okay. Evgenia? I'm here. Alnor? Here. Almat? Here. Arina? Okay. Arina is not here. Sakian? I'm here. Anwar? I'm here. Dinara? I'm here. Dana? She was here. I'm here. Timilan, he was here, and Jan, he was here. I'm here. Okay. okay, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If not, thank you so much. I wish you good luck in your preparation for the exam. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me via WhatsApp. You're welcome to contact me anytime. If I'm free, I will answer it immediately. If not, then you have to wait at least one or two hours to get your response. Thank you, Professor. See you. Thank you. See you. Will you upload you. the video from today's lecture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank Just you. after I finish it, it should be converted into relevant format, and I'll upload it.